crochet friends. This is Chris of Light and Joy Designs. Welcome back to the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour, which is a year-long crochet along where I present free weekly print patterns, monthly giveaways, and more. There is information in the description below on how to sign up for this for free and to see all the patterns that have come so far. This is week 28, and this week we're going to be learning C to C crochet stitch or corner to corner. And usually this stitch is, you see it used for making blankets. And today I'm going to be showing you several different ideas, 10 different ideas, how to use corner to corner crochet for different types of patterns that you can make. Corner to corner crochet starts with the corner and it works these little squares and it, it, it increases diagonally. So you start with one, then two, then three, then four, and so on, all the way back and forth. And you can make um, squares, rectangles, and even triangles, which I will show you in the next video for in next week. Um, I will also have a link to the rose pattern that you can use for if you make a, um, a shawl or a wrap or a scarf. This is a rose crochet pin and we just use a barrette, those snapping barrettes. And I'll have a link to this in the description below. Before we get started, if you like free patterns, please give this a thumbs up. It helps me a lot and let's get started. So as I mentioned, the corner to corner can be used for making all different kinds of shapes. This here is a scarf that I've made in a yarn called Bloom by Premier Yarns. It's a number three weighted yarn and I used a 5.5 millimeter hook to, so that it would have a nice drape to it. That This yarn would make a great uh, baby blanket. So this is a, like a mini scarf that I made and I, I secure it together with this rose. So you can make, um, the shapes that you can make are squares and rectangles. And that's going to lend itself to all different types of patterns that you can make. So anything that would require a square or anything that would be in the shape of a rectangle or even a tube. So we will learn how to connect uh, pieces together to make a tube or if you're going to be working with multiple pieces to make something else. So let's take a look at the 10 ideas I have for you. So as I mentioned, often the corner to corner is used for making blankets. And here are the 10 ideas that you can use corner to corner for making some really cool things. The first one is to use it to make a scarf or a wrap. This would be just a basic rectangle shape. The second idea and is to make a several different things that would be in the form of a tube, such as a lantern cover. Um, you could also use it on a, um, like I've done here, on a mason jar. And I just, I just changed colors with each row. So that's, um, a pretty idea and you can put a, uh, a candle inside or a tea light. Um, another tube idea is a mug cozy and that's what I'm going to actually be showing you today when I do the demonstration. The fourth idea is arm warmers. So we're coming into spring uh, if you're watching this currently and you know sometimes it's nice to you want to start wearing some of your warmer clothes maybe some of your t-shirts 
Um, but having like a nice light arm warmer can be nice to have in the springtime. Another idea is boot cuffs. Um, you see a lot of different um, styles for boot cuffs, but when you, when you see how this pattern comes about, you might want to, especially when we make it with a variegated <clears throat> yarn, you may want to try making some with this. <clears throat> and please definitely stay, stay tuned till the end of the video where I will have lots of pictures of some of these different ideas. Uh, number six is to make a pillow cover. And this could be, um, you know, a, either a square pillow or a rectangle pillow. It doesn't matter. I'll be showing you how to connect uh, if you have two of them together. And number seven, this is a really cool idea, and I'm planning on making one of these myself. And this is a, I'm going to make a wrist pillow because I do a lot of work at my computer and um, my hand is always kind of in this shape on top of my mouse. And I have a feeling that if I add a pillow underneath my wrist, it's going to take some of that pressure off. And it's a quick, quick project. Um, number eight is a hat. And if you, if you make a tube, um, you know, number nine is a cowl, and which is just a two, but you could make a matching cowl and hat just by making two of these, and then you just cinch the top, and then you have a hat. And I'll show you that um, on the demonstration today, too. And then the last idea is either a ruana or a poncho. And for Ruana, you would probably, you would make two pieces, two rectangular pieces, and just sew them together from here. And then this part goes over the, your back, and these two come over your front. Um, for a poncho idea, we will be using, I'll be showing you how to do that, the triangular version, next week. Uh, but if you would like to make an asymmetrical poncho, you can make a, a long uh, rectangle and then connect it on the side like this. You're going to connect it at this point right here. And then that makes um, a really cool asymmetrical poncho. So let me show you now how to... Um, the next things I'm going to show you are how to plan your project, if you want to make any of these, um, how to start the corner to corner, how to do increasing, how to do decreasing, and then how to do joining. So for planning your project, you are going to figure out, first of all, the dimensions, the size, the shape and the dimensions of what you're going to be making. So for instance, today I'm going to be making a mug cozy for this mug. So what that means is I'm going to be making a rectangle that I will connect into a tube and leaving a space for the handle to come through. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to measure how tall this is and the circumference, how long it will be. That will be the length of my rectangle. So, I have my measuring tape here and the height of my cup is about three and three quarters. So I'll probably make mine about three and a half inches tall or maybe, maybe even just three inches tall. So I'm going to put that measurement down here between three and three and a half inches. And now I'm going to measure around the outside. And we're at ten and a half inches around. 
So, and I know that yarn is sometimes stretchy, so <clears throat> I'm going to say between 10 and 10 and a half inches will be fine. The materials you will want to have handy for this project today will be some color changing or variegated yarn, a crochet hook that matches um, your yarn. Today I'm using Super Saver stripes in the colorway Parrot Stripe, and I'm going to be using a six millimeter crochet hook, which is a J. Um, a yarn needle, a scissors, and a measuring tape. Okay, so for corner to corner beginning, let's take a look at how we start. We start by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, a double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook, and a double crochet in the sixth chain from the hook, which was our starting chain. And that will be our first square. Okay, so to begin we're going to make a slip knot. You're going to take the yarn and put it over your hand. Cross the yarn over to the left. Take the yarn from the right and pull it over the yarn on the left. And then just pull that second one through. Tighten it up on your hook and now we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. And we're going to do a double crochet. So I'm going to make sure that this loop is uh, snug on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, go into that chain. You can either go under one or two threads, it doesn't matter. Just be consistent all the way along. I'm going to yarn over and pull through a loop. I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That's one double crochet created. Now I'm going to do a double crochet in each of these next two chains. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then the last one. Yarn over, go into that sixth chain or the starting chain. We have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there's our first square. Now, in this pattern, it's the three double crochets that make up the square. It's kind of like it's kind of like granny squares. And these chains are all the connecting points of all the different squares. And you're going to see that as we go along. So now we're going to find out how to do corner to corner increasing. Okay, so I'm going to show you with a, a different color. So what we're going to do next is we are going to, or we're going to be leaving off here, and now we're going to chain six again. One, two, three. And our orientation is going to change. Four, five, six. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did here. We're going to do a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, a double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook, and a double crochet in that first chain. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do a slip stitch into this third chain of this, uh, or the last chain from the from the square here. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, 
and we're going to make another square in this this chain three here so we're going to do three double crochets in here so now that's our second row of corner to corner so let's take a look at how that looks okay so we're going to chain six one two three four five six and now at this point what we're doing is we're we're going to we're going to flip our work over when whenever we're starting a new row and we're going to go into the fourth chain we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from our hook so that's one two three four so I'm going to yarn over go into that chain yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and I'm going to do that into the next two chains as well yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and the last double crochet into this chain right here I'm going to go under those two threads <coughs> yarn over pull up a loop three loops on my hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and now we take this and we lift it up so essentially what's happened is we're like this and we've got it flipped over so now we're going to slip stitch into this chain right here so here's our chain three this chain three right here and this is the third one right there so I'm going to go into that chain I like to go under two threads but you can go under one I'm going to yarn over pull through a loop and then pull it through the loop on my hook that's a slip stitch I just want to show you one other thing that will make this pattern faster and easier for you when you do the slip stitch here it doesn't have to go into this chain it can just go right into the chain three space let me show that to you so here's that chain three space this is a mirror a mirror image to the pattern so we just finished this double crochet right here we're going to do our slip stitch into this chain three space so you just you don't have to go into the chain you just go right into the chain three space yarn over pull through a loop and then pull it through the loop on your hook and that's a slip stitch and then of course you just continue on with the pattern with chain three and then the three double crochets right into that chain three space so as you go along in this pattern this slip stitch into the chain three space happens continually throughout the pattern so just use that method and your um, piece will grow faster it's it's faster than going into that third chain you just go right into the space instead And now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And now I'm going to do my double crochets into this chain three here. So one, two, and three. And now we have two rows completed. This first square was the first row, and these two squares are the second row. Okay, so let's do another increasing row. Okay, so this is where we left off at the end of our second row. All right, here we are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chain six again just like we did 
over here. This is how we do our increase. Then we're going to do a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, another one in the fifth chain from the hook, and another one in the sixth chain from the hook. Then we're going to do a slip stitch into the top of this chain three. We're going to chain three. Then we're going to do three double crochets into this chain three space. We're going to slip stitch again to the third chain of this chain three space, chain three, and then three double crochets into that chain three space. So let's take a look at how that looks. So this is where we stopped. We were, our work was oriented this way. So now we're going to flip it over and we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. And also double crochet in this sixth chain from the hook. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch into the third chain of this chain three space. So I'm going to flip up my work. There's that chain three space, and these chain three spaces are like connectors of these squares. So I'm going to go into this third chain here right at the corner of the square. I'm going to do a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through a loop, and pull that loop through the loop on my hook. Now I'm ready to chain three again. One, two, three, and then three double crochets into that chain three space. One, two, and three. All right, now we slip stitch again into that third chain of the chain three space. There's that third chain right there. You can see it. One, two, three. Pull through a loop and pull it through the loop on my hook. Now we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And three double crochets into that chain three space. One, two, Three. So there's the end of our third row. And you can see how nicely this um, stitch works with um, color changing or variegated yarns. You'll have these nice cute little squares with lots of different colors. So what you're going to do at this stage is you're going to continue working this increase uh, style until you have, until your piece is measuring the dimensions that you want. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so for my piece, I want mine to be about three to three and a half inches tall. And I want it to be about 10 inches long. So I did one more row and I've measured and it's just about a little over three inches long, three and a quarter inches. So that's going to be perfect for what I want to do. So that means that I'm going to want to I'm not going to want to make any more squares at the top here. I'm going to want to start working only this much. So, um, so if we use this as an example, I've done one, two, three, four. Okay. 
So I've done four rows, one, two, three, and four. And I'm right here. So from now on, I'm going to want to continue um, increasing on, on along this edge. But along this edge, I'm not going to want to keep increasing. I'm just going to want to stay at this height. So my yarn is here. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get it over here. So for the next row, what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm right here, right? So I'm going to slip stitch across these four stitches, one, two, three, and into this, this uh, third chain of the chain three. Then I'm going to chain three and I'm going to do my three double crochets into this chain three space. Slip stitch to this third chain of this chain three space. Chain three. Three double crochets into this chain three space. Slip stitch into the third chain of this chain three space chain three and three double crochets in this chain three space. So that's, I'm going to be working in this way uh, for my next row. So here we did not, here we did not do an increase. This would be considered um, a decrease. And then here we continued to increase along this edge. So let's go ahead and show you how that looks. Okay, so this is where I'm at, right here, and I'm going to be slip stitching across these stitches. So I'm going to just turn my work and I'm going to work into this first the top of this first double crochet, yarn over, pull through a loop, and pull through a loop on my hook. I'm going to go into the next one and slip stitch, and the next one, slip stitch, and then finally into that third chain <coughs> of the chain three space, and slip stitch in there. And now I'm ready to work my next row. And of course, we are working in the opposite direction. So you do kind of have to get used to that. We're working in this direction now. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then three double crochets into the chain three space. going to slip stitch into the third chain. So this is all familiar. One, two, three. Three double crochets. Slip stitch, chain three. Three double crochets. Whoop. Slip stitch into that third chain and chain three. And 
three double crochets. All right, so we are here. We just happen to be the flip side of this, but I can flip it over. So over here, we are no longer increasing, but here we did do an increase. So what comes next? Well, now we're going to want to continue increasing along this edge, remember? And along this and along this edge, we're going to we're never going to go higher than that now at this stage. So we're going to do our increase um, so we chain six and we do our three double crochets into these three chains, slip stitch, chain three, three double crochets, slip stitch into that third chain, chain three, actually these are going to be a little higher, but, and then our three double crochets. And so since we don't want to, we don't want to increase anymore, for our next row we're going to do the same thing that we did in this row, which is we're going to slip stitch into these four stitches, one, two, three, and four, and we're just going to work this same row again. So at this stage, what you're going to do is you're going to be alternating between these two rows until you get to this corner, until this corner is this side is the length that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work this piece until it's t about 10 inches long and then I'll meet you back here to show you how we um, how we'll do the decrease uh, to square this off. Okay, so my piece now measures the 10 inches across the bottom here, which is what I want. It's a little bit over. Perfect. And if we look at our diagram here, this is basically where I'm at. So I've just finished this row here. And now I am, I've just come back up to this spot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work another row coming down. So I'm going to have a, a decrease here, but then I'm also going to have a decrease here. So let's take a look how that will work. So we'll have our slip stitches here at the top. Okay, we're going to slip stitch across to make our next square and then we're going to chain three. We're going to do our three, oops, three double crochets into this chain three space. I'm going to slip stitch into the chain, the third chain of the chain three and I'm going to chain three <coughs> and I'm going to then do three double crochets into this chain three space here. Um, and of course mine is a little bit, mine is a little bit longer. I'll have one more square. So I'm going to do one, two, three squares. And when I get here, I'm, I'm not going to be doing another square, right? So I'm going to be 
coming down like this. And when I get here, I'm, I'm not going to be adding another square like I have been all along. So what I'm going to want to do is just utilize this same method of decreasing over on the side. So for my next row, I'm just going to slip stitch in those four stitches. And then I'm going to do my chain three. Actually, it'll be taller. <laughs> and then my three double crochets into the chain three space. And then um, I'll actually, so, so I'll be here. I'll be making two squares, actually. Let's show you that. So I'm going to slip stitch along those three double crochets and also into the third chain. And now I'm going to chain three and I'm going to do three double crochets into this chain three space, just like we've been doing all along. <clears throat> Do our slip stitch into that third chain. Chain three. Three double crochets into the chain three. Slip stitch, chain three, and now three double crochets into this chain three space. I'm going to join it with a slip stitch to this third chain. And now, just like I stopped increasing back here, I'm going to stop increasing here. So now I'm going to do that same method. I'm going to flip my work. And now I'm going to do my slip stitches to bring me where I need to be to add my next square here and also a slip stitch into that third chain and now I'm going to work two more squares <coughs> going in this direction And I'm going to join into that third chain of this chain three space, slip stitch in there. And now <clears throat> I need to get back to this corner to do my last square. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do my slip stitches, one, two, three, four. Two, uh, that's right, three and four. And I'm going to do my last square. One, two, three, and three. 
three double crochets, join it with a slip stitch to that third chain. Okay, and now my piece is complete. So let's take a look at the next step, which is how to join pieces together. And actually, before we do that, let me just show you. So this was an example of using doing a rectangle. If you were doing a square, you'd be working like this. So that's row one, row two, row three, and you'd have row four. And let's just put one more, row five. And let's say you, that was how big you wanted each side to be. So then at this stage, you would just start doing your decreases on both ends. Where you slip stitch across to get here. And then we slip stitch across here to get there. Slip stitch to get here and you do your final square. Here's an example of a square project that you can make. This is a, this is a trivet for uh, like a pot holder. And I made this in Lily's Sugar and Cream in the colorway Country Stripes. And you can see it makes this really cool pattern that you wouldn't get working in normal crochet where you work back and forth. You get this nice diagonal stripes. And um, if you want to make this also, it is eight squares across and eight squares on the other side. And I used a 5.5 millimeter hook. Now, before we join the, um, show you the joining, I just want to talk about one other consideration when working with this stitch. If you are going to make like a scarf or a wrap and you want it to have a delicate feel, you can see that the nature of this stitch is that it has all these spaces in between each of the squares. Now, depending on the size hook you use and the type of yarn, the, the, the weight yarn you use, those spaces can be more or less um, pronounced. So if you want it to be a more delicate uh, piece for, say, a, a wrap or a shawl or a scarf or even a light cowl for the springtime, you might want to use a lighter yarn, let's say like a three weight, which is what this was, and a larger hook. I used a 5.5 millimeter hook. Uh, normally with this kind of yarn you might be working with, say, a a 4.5 or a 4 millimeter hook. So if you want more drape and a little uh, lighter feel, just work with a lighter yarn and a larger hook. And if you want the spaces to be less pronounced, then work with a hook that's, um, that's smaller. Um, or you know a hook size that is designated for that yarn type so like in this one here um, this yarn probably calls for a 5.5 millimeter and I'm using a 6 but you can see that the the spaces are less pronounced because I use a hook size that's closer to what is called for um, if I had used a 5.5 millimeter hook on this piece the spaces would be even a little less pronounced. So that's just another consideration to keep in mind. So let me show you now how to join these pieces. Um, and I'm just going to um, finish this off by chaining one 
and cutting the yarn and pull that loop through. And before I show you how to join these, I'm going to show you how to sew in the ends on that I have found best in sewing the ends on this type of crochet. So I've got my yarn needle. This is a little trick I learned recently. Just fold the yarn over your yarn needle, hold it tight and pull that out and then just slide that into the eye of the needle. Makes it a little easier. So what I have done to um, Uh, for sewing in the ends is I, I'm just looking at where I'm at here. Um, I'm just going to go through these stitches here. I just like to get to the inside of the piece a little bit. And then I go to one of the places where I have the double crochets and I'm going to go through all those all those loops and then I'm going to go over to another one like that where all those double crochets were going into a chain three space pull them through like that make sure it's not too tight and then what I'm going to do is, so I came out of this thread, under that thread. I'm going to go under the next one and go back the same way I came. So not, not too tight, but not too loose. And then one more time, I'm going to go, I'm going to skip the thread I just came from under. And I'm going to go under these like that and then I'm just going to cut that and that's nicely sewn in so for joining um, if you notice all of the squares are joined at their corners and we're going to join these pieces so that we maintain that same way of joining. So I'm going to fold my piece over and I'm going to go into the corner stitch at each corner and I made a slip knot and I'm just going to pull that through Tighten that up. And I'm going to pull that through those two corners. And I'm just going to chain to, to tie that down. Pull that all nice and snug. And so now what I'm going to do is on one side, I'm just going to slip stitch in each of the stitches and then when I get to the corner place on each stitch I'm going to go into that space And I'm going to do a slip stitch. Joining those two spots. Now I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to slip stitch along here. And it's, it's going to be three slip stitches each time. And then I'm going to join those two corner spots 
with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch on the stitches on the other side. Now I'm going to do my slip stitch in the corner. And I'm going to slip stitch on the other side. Three of those. And then I'm going to go into this corner stitch, and they can be a little tight. And I'm going to do a slip stitch. I'm going to pull through the loop and slip stitch. So I lost some of my yarn there. And then I'm going to just chain one and cut the yarn, pull that through. And now it's joined in a way that it looks the same all the way around. So I made this, I, I did a, a full join here. Um, if you were going to be making this into a coffee mug, you would just join the top and the bottom part and then the, the the handle will come through here. This is going to actually be a, a mug cozy for, um, you know, just, um, you know, like a mason jar or um, if you get a coffee cup at, at work. So there we've got that. And I could actually also use this on one of my little lanterns. So um, stick around to the end of the video because I will have pictures of a lot of these different um, corner to corner projects that I mentioned. I'll have some pictures. And uh, that is how you do corner to corner rectangles, squares, and tubes. Um, also, you, you know, if you're making um, any of these other projects that I mentioned, like the ruana or the poncho or a pillow cover, you'll just use that same method of connecting the sides together for those. And I will have a link in the description below for the, the rose shawl pin that you can use for connecting um, shawls and, and so on. Um, and of course, if you want to make a cowl, you would just make it in the same way, but bigger. All right, so I want to show you one other way, or actually a couple other ways that you can connect corner to corner pieces. So one of those ways is to use something called a button toggle, and I will have a link in the description below for how to make these. They're super fast and easy to make. So what you would do is, um, because, because this fabric um, creates all these, all these openings, it's perfect for uh, fastening together with button toggles. So all you do is you just you know, pick a place where you would like to um, close it up and just put your toggle into one side and then put it into the other side. Like that. And you might do, you know, you might do a couple of them. I 
you could have it buttoned all the way down, which would be really nice. So let me show you another way. The other way is using one of these roses or one of the uh, crocheted hair scrunchies. This is called the hyperbolic, hyperbolic hair scrunchie, and I'll have a link to this as well. And combining that with a, a shawl pin, and you just go in on one side, go through both of the garments in the back, come back through, and then back through the flower. And that's another way to use the, uh, the rose flower as a shawl pin. And of course you can do the same thing with the hair scrunchie and it also has the, the look of a flower. So you just go through the center of the hair scrunchie, through the back, like this, and then pull it through the front. And then you also have a nice fastener that way. So lastly, another way of combining these is um, another way to crochet them together. And I'm going to show you the way for um, making uh, a like a triangle cowl. Um, and if you were making this with a wrap, this could be a um, an asymmetrical poncho. So what you do is um, get your yarn and make a slip knot on the end. You're going to go into the corners on each side or wherever it is that you're joining you're going to put that slip knot on your hook and then you're going to pull that slip knot through both of those places closer so you can see a little better. And then you're going to um, make a, a chain one slip knot and then just kind of pull that all nice and tight right there. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to go to the next space for each of the matching squares on each side go in just go into that space yarn over and pull through a loop and then just slip stitch it through the loop on your hook and then you're going to chain three again one two three so this is the, the chaining three is basically replaces as is an alternate to slip stitching along one of the sides. One, two, three. And it will, um, it's not going to show up so much. It's going to be two, three. I'll show you when it's all completed here. One, two, three, and so on to the end. One, two, three, and that basically represents the three stitches that we're skipping over. Go into that space. Just slip stitch and chain three. One, two, three. And we're almost at the end. One, two, three. 
And then on the last one, we're going to go into this, the space and then right into, right into the corner stitch here of this last square. Going to, let's see what happened there. We're going to yarn over, pull through a loop, pull it through the other side, and then again, slip stitch, and then just chain one. And then you can cut your yarn and just pull that through. And then you can sew in those ends. And so you can barely see the, the chains and certainly if you turn it over to the other side, you don't see the chains at all. So that's a, an alternate way to combine fabric. Uh, let's say you were making like a, a sweater or something or a vest. So I'm also making this wrist rest and I've just finished this. I've just to let you know I've been working with um, Red Heart Super Saver Stripes in Polo Stripe here and working with a six millimeter hook and I have some um, old cotton balls from supplement bottles that I've just saved over a long period of time, finally using. So now I'm going to show you how we um, put this together. And if you're curious about the size, it's uh, 8 inches by 6 inches. And I did a total of uh, 10 squares along this edge and 8 squares along this edge. So to close this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over. And as you can see, I didn't cut my yarn when I finished. And I'm just going to um, join it up along this edge and then down along this edge. And then what I'll do is I'll just um, pick up over here and finish off this edge here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this uh, loop. I took it off my hook and I'm going to pull it through the space between the first square and the second square and I'm going to pull it through and I'm just going to do a slip stitch which is basically a chain one and then I'm going to do my um, I'm going to do the the join where I do chaining so I'm just going to chain three one two three and I'll just come down a little closer and then what I'm going to do is just go in between the square and in between these two squares. I'm going to grab the yarn and I'm going to slip stitch it through the loop on my hook. And then I'm going to chain three and do that all over again. Go through the space between the next two squares on either side yarn over, pull that loop, pull that yarn through, and then pull it through the loop on my hook, and then I'm going to chain three. So I'm just going to do that all the way around to the end. When I get to the corner, I'm going to go into the corner stitch here on either side, and I'm going to do my slip stitch there. And then just continue along the short side and I'll just I'll meet you here at the end. And I'm just going to chain three and uh, continue this along this edge. A 
Okay, so now I'm just at the end and I'm just going to go right in between these last two squares and I'll do a slip stitch in there. Pull that through the loop on my hook and then I'm just going to chain one and I will cut my yarn. And I'll sew that end in. And then I'm going to turn this inside out unless you know unless for some reason you would like to have this um, as an edging which is another option so I am going to continue with with this um, edging on the outside instead of turning it inside out uh, because I kind of like the, the look of it so what I want to do so because I want it to match on this side like it is here and then match on the opposite side I'm going to start at this corner here um, if I started on this corner and worked around this way this this look would be on the opposite side and this look here with these V's would be on this side and they wouldn't match so we're going to start over here and before I seam it up I'm going to stuff it with the cotton balls and you could also um, stuff it with yarn scraps too I save those for projects like this too. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew this all together. All right, so now I'm just going to go in between um, these two end squares put my hook in between the space in between them. I'm going to put the slip knot, the loop on my hook, and I'm going to get my working tail, pull that through, and then I'm going to chain one or slip stitch to secure it. I'm going to pull it nice and tight to secure it. And now I'm going to chain three and I'm going to go to the next square on this side go in between that space and the next square on this side and I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to pull that loop through the loop on my hook to make a slip stitch and I'm going to chain three go into the next space on both sides slip stitch, chain three, the next space, slip stitch, chain three, and I'm going to go into the corner stitch on each side. I'm going to do a slip stitch, slip, slip stitch those together. Those corner stitches can be a little tight, so mm, I just caught a little thread there. Slip stitch, chain three, and then I'm back where I started. I'm going to go into those last two spaces, yarn over, I'm catching something there, yarn over, pull through a loop it through the loop on my hook and then I'm just going to slip stitch to this um, this first stitch here to secure it I'm going to chain one cut my yarn and then pull it through and then all I have to do is sew in the ends and I have a nice wrist for when I'm working at the computer with my 
mouth so I don't um, get the strain on my wrist. In fact, I was finding that the strain was going up into my elbow. And I think that was because I was constantly, my wrist was constantly like this and it was kind of causing a strain in this forearm muscle. So this will be a nice experiment. Hopefully this will fix that problem. And one other point is, is if let's say you didn't want your piece to have an edging, what you could do is um, you could you could do this edging um, for the first bit and then turn it inside out and then sew the remaining edges together, um, which I either showed you already or will show you in uh, another section of this video. Um, or you could sew both edges and, you know, sew this edge, turn it inside out, and then sew this last edge after you stuff it. So the last way that you can join these pieces, I'm going to show you um, an invisible join, and that would be using a yarn needle. So you'll go into the whatever corner you're starting at, and pull your yarn through. And since we want this to um, be invisible, what we're going to do is, and remember, we're only going to be connecting these squares at the places where they, at the corners. So on the first side, what we're going to do is we're going to go in, but we're going to go underneath all the stitches. So the yarn is going to be fed on the inside. And we're going to come out here. Then we're going to go in on the other side. And again, we're going to feed through on the opposite side and come out at the next corner. Let's pull that yarn through. We'll tie a knot there at the end. Then come across to the next connection point. Go underneath the tops of all these stitches till you get to the next connection point, and then pull your yarn through. Go across to the next connection point. And put your yarn through the top of those stitches come out the next connection point or the next corner of that square, pull those tight and come across to the next connection point. And again, working underneath and inside of those stitches. And then to the next connection point. And all the way down to the end. So like for our wrist thing where after we've stuffed it, let's say you didn't want to have this edging and you wanted an invisible seam, you could use this seam and it will, you know, for closing it up and it'll be virtually invisible. You'll just take these ends and sew them in the same way to um, keep them from being seen. And it is connected just the way the rest of the fabric is, right at the corners of all the squares. Another use for this little tube that was our mug cozy is it can also be a lantern cover. I love these 
uh, portable lanterns. Um, they're great when the power goes out or for camping or when you're sitting outside in the spring or the summer. Um, sometimes the light is a little too bright or you just want to create a, uh, a mood and you can just put this on. And all of these are about the same size, so that, that 10 inch circumference. And there you have this really cool lantern cover. It's really pretty. And you can see it, it stays up even when it's standing. You don't need any kind of a strap. So you might want to try that too. So I hope that you liked this pattern today. Hope that you like the uh, got your creative ideas flowing about how you might use corner to corner for some projects outside of blankets, although it's great for blankets. Um, and please leave me a comment below to let me know how you think you might use it. And if you do post a picture of your project, please um, leave a link to that in the comments below and because we'd love to take a look at how you used corner to corner to make something really cool. And um, if you have a moment, give it a thumbs up, a like. Stay tuned for the pictures that are coming next and subscribe because next week I'm going to be showing you how to make a triangular version, how to use corner to corner to make triangle pieces. And I've got a couple of different pattern ideas for that as well. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.